to get a feel for like the um, the backgrounds of everyone. So, how many are trainers, personal trainers? Any PTs or athletic trainers? Or I know there's a Cairo in, in the building. Um, so we're all looking at personal trainers. We, we train general population, athletes, stuff like that. Um, we got California, and what we got everyone else from Calgary. So Canadian, East Coast, I and mean, you guys are trainers here, right? Nice. And what's that? Oh, and, okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, so I just, uh, it, it's nice because the presentation, which I'll go into a little bit more detail when we start filming and, you know, doing the editing and stuff, is going to be a lot more um, personal trainer based. Um, I mean, I'm going to get a little bit into the rehab and kind of the geeky stuff, but the other three gentlemen that are presenting are going to get a lot more into the functional anatomy and stuff like that. To, but with me, it's going to be a little bit more of what I do as, as a coach. Um, and working with the athletes that we have at, at Cressy Performance, but um, but yeah, welcome everyone to the to the spine and core, core and health training seminar. Um, I have to say, last night I got in and it, it was, I was a little freaked out. It was 10 o'clock at night and it was still light outside. I felt like I needed to go outside and play some basketball or something to let, let, out, let out some energy. Um, but uh, I'm really happy to be here. Glad everyone is here on a, on a Saturday. Um, uh, just to give you a little bit of breakdown of what I'm going to be covering, it's a kind of like a pretty massive topic to talk about spine and core training. Um, like I said, I'm going to be dealing more with stuff that we see at, the, at my facility, um, which is in Boston, um, and what we deal with as far as the general population people that come in, um, baseball players that come in, um, and just really from the assessment process as far as like kind of what we look, what we look for, um, with people walking in the facility, because we really kind of pride ourselves on bridging the gap between the training world and the physical therapy world. Like we don't, we don't diagnose anything, we don't treat anything as far as what we do at, at Cressy Performance. Um, we have, obviously have a pretty extensive network of PTs and chiros and um, uh, rehab guys that we deal with. So, and it's not to say we don't get people that are banged up that come in, but we're certainly not diagnosing stuff and treating them and, and doing all that. So a lot of times people, when they come in, they've already been to the physical therapist and they've already been to rehab and we're just kind of taking over. So again, we're kind of bridging that gap between the, the PT world and what we do from a performance standpoint. Um, just to give you some people some shout outs for the, for the presentation. Um, you can't really talk about the spine. We're giving the first two guys a little, little kudos, Dr. Stuart McGill and Craig Liebenson, um, as well as my business partner Eric and the rest of the people on that. Like a lot of what is, is going to be talked about in, except for Optimus Prime, he really didn't have much to do with, with the training component side of things. But um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is some of the stuff that th these guys have, have talked about previously and what I've learned from them, what I've expounded from them. Um, and obviously Rick, Dean, and, J and Jeff, like Dave. Um, I didn't, most of you guys know the muscle imbalances, lower and upper body. So Rick was kind enough to ask me to participate in the upper body version last year, which was like my first foray into a fitness product. And I was very humbled that he asked me to take part in that. So, and then when he, when he asked if we wanted to get together for an in-house, in-person seminar, I was like, right on, let's do it. Um, and this is my first trip to Edmonton in, or ever, but first time in Canada in probably over a decade when I played ball in college. We used to, we had a couple games up in Ottawa and Kingston, but I've never been this far north or west for that matter. So. Um, first trip out here. And especially, I want to say thank you to you um, for you to come in on a, on a weekend when you could be making money um, and to make yourself better, which is going to make you more money, um, and not to mention make you better trainers and coaches in general. I mean, it's a big, huge kudos to you guys to come in on, on your off time just to come in and make yourselves better um, coaches and trainers. So some of you kind of know who I am, but for those who don't, just to give you the kind of the brief history of my background and where I've come from, um, I actually have my, my degree in health education, so I was originally going to be a health teacher. Um, I had my concentration in health wellness promotion, so my academic background dealt with you know, that, that being a health teacher side of things. I did my student teaching. And then after that, I actually had to do an internship in uh, central New York at a, at a fitness facility for corporate fitness, which is Basically, the employees work at this building. There was a gym there. I was in the gym to help them during their, their lunch breaks or after work and just kind of get them moving and get them uh, a little bit of exercise. But 
I did that for three months, and I was like, okay, I could spend my life in a classroom dealing with the bureaucratic nonsense of parents and administration, or I could be in a gym. And I was like, it was kind of an easy choice to go in the gym side of things. So um, I got my, my CSCS back in 2006. And in and, and central New York, there's not much going on. Um, my hometown has literally no stoplights whatsoever, and the closest city is Syracuse, which isn't a huge city, but um, big enough to be called a city. And I was working as a personal trainer for about three years in various commercial gyms. And uh, Eric Cressy was, uh, he graduated from, uh, from UConn and got a job in Connecticut. And I said, hey, they're looking for a trainer out here. Why don't you come out and you know, get out of New York? I was like, hell yeah, let's get out of here, because I wasn't going anywhere in New York. So I moved to Connecticut. And then before long, him and I moved to Boston. And uh, you know, we, we opened up Cressy Performance in, uh, let's see, how long? it's been five years now. So it was the uh, summer of 2007. Uh, we started Cressy Performance in Hudson, Massachusetts, um, which is probably about 25 miles west of Boston. So close enough to be, say that we're in Boston, but we're not quite in Boston. Has anyone ever been to Boston? Yep, Rob has. Um, but you never, you haven't come into the facility at all, have you? I don't know, yeah. Nice. Um, so yeah, it, with, with Cressy Performance, you may or may not know, we deal with a lot of baseball players. Um, I would say this past off season we had roughly 70 professional baseball players training with us. Um, we have anywhere from all the way from school to JV, varsity, college, college baseball players as well. Um, but we also have, we deal with various sports too. Like we're kind of known as the baseball guys and, um, and that's our niche and that's a good thing. Uh, we own that niche, but we definitely have hockey, softball, tennis. I even had a fencer in one time, which is kind of cool. Um, but we also deal with a lot of general population that come in. So we get a lot of the teenagers, the weekend warriors that come in and uh, that may or may not be beat up. Or there's just people that take it a little bit more seriously. So our gym isn't the type of gym where people just walk in and say, hey, I want to be a member here and work out. That's not how it works. Like they come in, they get assessed, they get a program written for them. And everyone works off an individualized program. So there's four coaches. We do the assessments. We write every program. And then we're kind of coaching them through that. So it's more of like a, I wouldn't say it's one-on-one -on -one training, although sometimes that does happen, but very rarely. But a lot of it's going to be more of like a group, group component um, and uh, more of like a semi-private training um, component with that. And, uh, but certainly I have a, I've got my name out there as far as Teen Nation, Livestrong, Men's Health. Um, I've been blogging for a while. But you know, my main cream is being a coach at the facility and certainly I make a little bit of, 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 of side you know, income as far as doing the writing thing and all that. Um, I do like lifting heavy things. Um, we definitely pride ourselves at getting people strong at our facility. So as much as we are, we, we like to think of ourselves as educated meatheads. You know, we kind of like do like the, the corrective side of things and making people feel better. Because honestly, if you get people feeling better and moving better, they're going to be yours for life. You know, there's, there's a lot to be said about somebody coming in with lower back pain or knee pain or shoulder pain, and they've dealt with all these chiros and physical therapists, it's never gotten any better, but you get them better yourself and they're, and they're, they're yours for life. So we, and we get a lot of that. Um, and I say, you know, this used to say cats, but since I now own a cat, um, I can't say that anymore and I love my cat. <laughs> so I, I put poodles in there instead. Um, but that's just a little brief history of who I am and where I'm from. Um, so, I mean, I think I work at a pretty kick-ass facility that and I, I, I get to wear sweatpants and t-shirts and listen to a lot of music all day and, you know, throw stuff around, tell people to lift stuff and it, it's kind of a cool thing. So that just gives you a little brief ba background of where I am and where, and where I'm from. So as far as today, the outline, the overview and stuff you're going to learn, you know, obviously, with, a, with the title of the seminar of, of, of core and back health, you're, you're man, we're going to be managing general back pain from assessment to some levels of badassery. And just so we know, that, that is not, wearing your collar up like that is not badass at all. Um, so with the assessment stuff, like me personally, like, like, there is a, um, a set um, system of assessment that we go through at Cressy Performance. Um, I'm going to briefly go through that, but I'm also going to briefly talk about, okay, if I know somebody's coming in with lower back stuff or back stuff in general, what we do, and then taking them from that to the progressions. And it's, gonna, it's, it's weird because the, the way this seminar is set up 
as far as today and tomorrow is a little backwards because I'm dealing more with the performance side of things where normally you kind of deal like, hey, we have a rehab person, this is how we're going to get them better, ground-based stuff and moving them into the performance component. But because I'm not going to be here tomorrow, it's like, okay, Tony, you're going first. So it's going to be a little bit backwards. I mean, I am going to get a little bit into the assessment, but a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is going to be from the performance side of things. Um, obviously, I want to give you an inside look of what we do at, at the facility um, as far as how we approach spine and core training. Going to talk about a lot of exercise progressions. I think there's nothing worse than listening to somebody talk for one hour, let alone four, without having a bunch of videos and, and getting people hands on and showing them the stuff that we do. So there's going to be a lot of exercise progressions. Um, going to talk a little bit about the importance of breathing patterns, which is something that in maybe the last year, maybe two, I would say in the last year definitely, that we've, we've kind of grown into at, at the facility, like really trying to look more into the breathing patterns and how a much of a key role that plays with isolative core training and how we integrate that with the more dynamic stuff that we do in the weight room. And the isolative and integrative core stability. Um, a lot of that's going to be coming off of uh, Mike Robinson's Complete Core Fitness, which if you never haven't watched that, excellent, excellent resource. Um, there's really no other better way I could have put it. I can't be like, oh, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about inner core, outer core. Like that, is like, that is like the perfect title of how we go about separating the inner core and the outer core and how we combine them together in, in, in terms of improving performance. So we're going to be talking a lot about that. You know, we're going to realize that people aren't always these delicate flowers. We need to get people a training effect. We can't, you know, people walk in hurt, I understand that, but you can train around anything. We've had people in our facility that have been in back braces, we've had them in a leg cast. You know, you still have another leg, an upper body, and a core we can train. So, I, we can't, like, trainers often get in the mindset of, like, someone's hurt, like, we're going to get super corrective, we're going to spend a week working on their ankle mobility. You know, you got, you got to train people. We've got to get them a training effect. And I think a lot of what I'm going to discuss about today is going to definitely delve into that. You know, and of course, we're going to talk about a little bit of squats and deadlifts. I can't, I can't talk for that one without at least talking about some, some cool stuff. And this is just going to be a massive brain dump. Like, when I was writing this thing, I was like, I have so many things I want to say. I have such a limited time to say it. So I'm just going to throw them out at you. Um, so if it's a little ADD-ish, I apologize. But I, I'm definitely going to be, I, I might say something in four slides. Oh, I forgot to say this. And then, so it's just going to be a massive, massive brain dump. Um, but hopefully it will be a, a somewhat coherent manner. And next slide. There we go. For some reason, that one was giving me problems in the, in the... There we go to go. Oh, there we go. Okay, so when I talk, I tend to use terminology that, uh, that I think is unique to me, but so I just want to make sure that we clear the air as far as like anything that I say. So someone, when I say something is baller, it has nothing to do with basketball. It's like, okay, that, it's just something that's really bad. That's the nice thing is awesome. So there's going to be a couple of slides in about a minute or two where I'm going to say something's really baller. So it has nothing to do with basketball. So swole is just, slow, it's just a little slang for someone putting on some muscle. Bro science, you know, we have a, a kid here that weighs maybe 140 pounds that has every supplement and known to man. Um, you know, there's no, with bro science, you know, people talk about fat burning zone and, Toning a muscle, lengthening a muscle, which you can't do. You know, lower back injuries, are they really lower back issues? Is a lower back injury an actual lower back issue? What do we think? Not necessarily. I mean, certainly that's where, where treatment might be made, but it could be something going on up in the neck. It could be something going on with the, you know, ankle mobility. It could be a lot of things come into play. So um, I try to steer clear of the bro science stuff and try to take a little bit more of a, of a you know, real approach to everything. Um, and stuff that makes me want to swallow. When I say I want to swallow a live grenade, that means that's pretty dumb. Like that, I, that's just not useful at all, and mildly irritating. So, um, th in case I talk about any of that, that's what that means. So, but before we start, I also want to talk about. Again, you're here to get educated. So, bef and, I, and anything I know when I started off in this industry, I thought I knew everything coming out of school. Like I, I know how to train people. I know. Functional anatomy, insertions, origins. You know, I really didn't learn anything until I was outside of school and I started reading stuff on my own, going to seminars, going to conferences. So, again, this is a, an ode to you guys that you're here. Does everyone know who Thomas Plummer is? He is essentially the godfather of um, the industry as far as like setting up your own facility, 
um, and, and stuff like that. So anyone who's ever interested in, now I'm, I'm assuming most of the guys here are in a commercial gym setting. Yes, no, I know Rob, it, Rob has his own, but um, if any of you are ever interested and say, at some point I want to own my own gym and how do I go about doing that, that's the guy you read. You know, he has about two or three books out um, that talks about a lot of what, how we design our facility is, is off of what Thomas Plummer has written about. But, and he, I've seen, and if you've ever seen him speak, I don't know if Rob, you've seen him speak. That man, is, he's a great public speaker, but he does not hold back. Like, he has the mouth of a sailor when he speaks, and it's awesome, because he, he keeps it real, and he'll, he'll just call BS on people. And, um, but I think, you know, he, he knows his stuff. So anyone ever interested in learning more about the, the fitness industry and how to become more of a business person and stuff like that, it's like, he would be your man. And he's always telling people, you know, you, the only way you're going to get better is by educating yourself. So again, this, this is, you know, the fact that you guys are here is, is kind of a big deal. So I also, I like to give people, show slides of some cool stuff that goes on at the facility as far as videos. Just to kind of give an idea of like the, the general feel of what the atmosphere is like. So this is Antoine, who, is a, who did play in the CFL actually. Him hitting a 345, but this is probably about three years ago, but it's such an awesome video that it kind of gives you an idea of what the, what the atmosphere is like. Just his reaction is the coolest part. <laughs> so, as you can imagine, when George, the guy spotting him, and Anton are ever, whenever in the facility, energy is just up. Like, you have the high school kids that are watching, he's banging his head against the wall, coming back. So, yeah, Antoine, and those, those two were both local college football guys in Boston. And Antoine ended up playing in the CFL for a little bit, but that's just to give you a little bit of an idea of the, some of the atmosphere. This is actually uh, Tim Collins. He, Tim is actually a cool story. Like he, he came to us as a senior in high school, wasn't drafted, wasn't even getting a sniff by any of Division I schools. Um, he was pitching in a, in a college game, or not a college game, in a summer league game uh, after his senior year. And he struck out like you know, nine batters that he faced in, in three innings. Uh, the then uh, general manager of the Blue Jays, J.P. Ricciardi, was at the game because he's from Worcester, which is a town that's like, I don't know, an hour west of Boston. Tim was there. He was like, hey, you want to play a pro ball? Tim was like, sure, why not? And Tim was all of maybe 140 pounds, lefty, 5'7", maybe through 82, 84 miles an hour. You know, now he's pitching for the Kansas City Royals. Touches 95, and he's doing very well. Um, and this is him doing a 445-pound hit thrust for eight reps, and he's just a freaky athlete. Close to a 38-inch vertical, just, just insane, just, just a pure athlete. And it's just 445 pounds that he's just thrusting up there. And these are baseball guys. I mean, when baseball, I mean, we're, we're kind of changing the paradigm, but Baseball is kind of known as like, okay, don't lift weights, it'll make you big and bulky, you're not going to get, you know, you're not, you're not going to improve your velocity. Um, and that's not the case at all. We have plenty of guys that come in into the facility who will put on 15, 20 pounds and maintain their mobility, maintain their flexibility, um, move better. Um, you know, so, and Tim is, you know, he's been training with us for five off seasons now. He's with the second season with the Kansas City Royals. Um, he's a middle reliever for them, but... He, uh, he's just a freaky athlete, and that's just, that's, just, that's just to give you a little sample of that. This next one is uh, one of our high school softball players. That's 345 pound hip thrust. I think I put this video on my blog once, and there was a strength coach in Japan. I was like, I showed my athletes this just to prove a point, because they couldn't do like one, they were bitching about 135. <laughs> and, and I put this on there, and he's like, he showed that to them. And she's done up to 405. And you notice with the hip thrust how she's actually finishing? Like I see so many videos on YouTube where people are like, oh, 405 hip thrust, and they're not even getting their hips up all the way. They're, there's no pause. It's just up, down, up, down, up, down. Um, and Becca's been training with us, I think, since she was like 13, 14. And she's doing very well with, with softball. I mean, we have plenty. We have, we have a women's group that come to the facility twice a week. Um, we have quite a few softball players that come, but, uh, but Becca is actually with, is one of our rock stars. Like, we actually, like, she'll, there was one case where one of our college kids was pushing the prowler, and she was like, hey, can I jump in? And he was like, oh, let me take some weight off. She's like, she slapped on another 50 pounds and just cruised. 
was awesome. So she was like, oh, well, Becca, Becca. I mean, she, she, she works her, her tail off, and she's actually one of our softball players. And then next one, so this is Whitney. This is one of our um, minor league guys' wives. It's funny, because like in the minor league, I mean, not many. It, for a minor league guy to get to train in Boston in the winter, it's kind of a, a, a unique situation when they could be going to Florida, they could be going to Arizona. You know, the, the atmosphere that we've, and the, the camaraderie that we've developed there, you know, the, a lot of the wives will come up too, and they end up training at the facility as well. And this is actually Whitney. This is, I think this is another one I put on my blog. And this is her doing a one-handed uh, chin-up. She would come in, she's training right along 10, 12, 20 minor league guys at the same time. And they're looking at her with her jaws to the floor, like, uh, how, is that, how is this happening? You know, she's doing deadlifts, she's doing squats, she's doing that. I mean, to, to her credit, she was a, a gymnast back in the day, so she has very good relative strength. But, I mean, that's still kind of cool. You know, and that's uh, pretty impressive nonetheless. I think there might be another one. Yeah. This is high def. So this is actually one of our, Chad Rogers, he's a, he was a third round pick for the Braves. And it's a 225 pound reverse lunge. But the coolest thing about this video, and it's not even the fact that he's doing that, because I mean, it is cool, but it's not. But in the background, we got, oh, I forget we have, that's Dee Dee Griesbauer. She won Ironman Brazil three years ago. She's probably top 10 in the world as far as triathlons. And then this guy, which you can't see, just a regular guy, like, he's one of our guys that literally moves like a ham sandwich. Like, he's lower back pain, shoulder hurts, whatever. And this is, you got pro athlete, pro athlete, regular guy, regular guy. I mean, you got 14-year-old kids training around guys in the big leagues. So it, again, it's just a unique atmosphere as far as what we provide. And, that, and this, again, this is just to provide a little bit insight of like what it looks like. Oh, we got one more. And this is my girlfriend, who's now a doctor, pushing the prowler. <laughs> So I had to throw, I threw that in there last night, because I did, I did actually a presentation back in March where I had a video of her, or a picture of her deadlifting, one of her old colleagues, so like, oh, he had a picture of you deadlifting. And I was like, I, it was a picture, and I couldn't find it, so I, but I found that and had to throw that in there instead, but um, that's Lisa pushing the prowler, and again, there's just, I think that was one, during one of our Thanksgiving morning lifts where it's nothing but people arriving at 7 o'clock in the morning on Thanksgiving morning to, and like 40 people show up and we all get a lift in right before we go gorge ourselves with food. But again, it's just like regular people going in there along with the pro guys.